For better experience, use headphones. One day you feel like smoking, you smoke, that's up to you. But the compulsion will be taken away. The physiological dependence will be taken away. I don't think it's good or bad, it's just quite stupid to be smoking. It's not good or bad, it's just stupid because this machine was not made to smoke. This is an eco-friendly machine <laughs> but now you're making it into a smoking machine. That means it's stupid, isn't it? A well, very efficient machine, you make it inefficient machine. Is it not stupid? Is it good or bad? There's no such thing. So somewhere you thought it's a smart thing to do. When you were just ten-year-old kid, you wanted to suck in and blow it out into somebody's face. It felt like a smart thing to do. You tell me, smoking, a machine that doesn't smoke, to make it smoke. Right now we're working so hard to make our car smoke less, isn't it? Enormous amount of research into fuels and engines and everything is going on to make our car smoke less, isn't it? A non-smoking machine, if you make it smoke, is it stupid or intelligent? If you see something as stupid, you can't be doing it every day. <laughs> Somewhere, you feel smarter than other people. You do Shambhavi Mahamudra, suddenly your whole system is so fired up, the need to smoke, the need to drink coffee, tea, everything just evaporates. Now if you do it, it's only for the pleasure of it. One day you feel like drinking coffee, you drink it. One day you feel like smoking, you smoke, that's up to you. But the compulsion will be taken away. The physiological dependence will be taken away. Cigarettes are designed to rapidly deliver nicotine in your brain. Inside your brain, Nicotine triggers the release of chemicals that make you feel good. As nicotine stimulates parts of your brain over and over, your brain gets used to having nicotine around. Over time, nicotine changes how your brain works and makes it seem like you need nicotine just to feel okay. There is no safe amount of cigarette smoke. When you smoke, the chemicals in tobacco reach your lungs quickly every time you inhale. Your blood carries the toxins to every organ in your body. The nicotine in cigarettes can cause your pulse and blood pressure to rise, increasing your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Smoking stains your teeth and nails with an unsightly yellow film. It can also dull your skin and make your hair brittle. When you stop smoking, your brain gets irritable. As a result, you might get anxious or upset. You might have a hard time concentrating or sleeping, having strong urges to smoke or just feel generally uncomfortable. After you quit smoking, your body begins to heal within 20 minutes of your last cigarette. The nicotine leaves your body within 3 days. Quitting can help you add years to your life. Quitting improves blood flow, making your skin look more radiant and your smile look brighter. When you stop smoking, you are helping your heart. Within 8 weeks of quitting, your cholesterol levels improve. The good news is that millions of people have quit smoking for good and most report feeling better after they have been quit for a while. When you don't enjoy the fitness of your body, then the only other thing that you will enjoy is intoxication. If you do not enjoy the vibrance and vitality of your system, 
then intoxication becomes the only way. And now drugs are not only intoxication, they'll also make them feel vibrant for a few hours. So, massively, the generation is moving in that way. And one more significant reason why <laughs> this generation is moving towards these drugs is in their minds, the heavens that were promised are collapsing. Maybe still they are not able to articulate it very clearly, they don't have the clarity or the courage to say it. But for a long time we have managed people saying that, if you abstain from all these things in heaven, all of this will be available in, <laughs> in huge quantum quantities. Now heavens are collapsing, so they are trying to drink it up right here. So there are like this, there are many aspects. Fundamentally, there is not enough... there is... there is no need for an individual human being to physically strive for his survival. That itself makes the need for intoxication more. What are the solutions? It's very, very important, those of you who have growing children, you involve them in sports, other activity which engages them with nature, like trekking, mountain climbing, swimming, some intense activity and also engagement with nature, art, music, they must become passionate about something, they must learn to know the pleasures of their intellect, their emotion, their consciousness. When one begins to enjoy the pleasures of the mind, the pleasures of the sharpness of your intellect, the pleasures of emotion, the pleasures of your consciousness, then to indulge in the pleasures of the body will naturally come down dramatically. So this is very important that children should go through a variety of activity and involvement and passionate involvement in various things. This will bring down the need for alcohol and drugs, but we must understand this. Today it is being heavily marketed and I'm sorry, the movies are promoting it. Everywhere it is being made like it's a social thing, unless you drink, you're no good. <laughs> People ask me, Sadhguru, you drink? I said, yes, I drink water. They look at me like I'm a strange creature. Just water? Yes, that is the most fantastic drink that you can have is water. Because this body is made of water, not alcohol. Seventy percent of this body is water, definitely not alcohol. But above all, I am a different case because I have found within my system how this being the greatest chemical factory, if you want intoxication, you can generate it from inside. A kind of intoxication which makes you inebriated and super aware at the same time. This is the kind of intoxication we should intru introduce our children and youth to. This is why we are striving to bring the technology of yoga into everybody's life. If you go into certain states within yourself, you will know intoxication like no drug or no drink can ever create. At the same time, you will remain super aware and uh, it's... it will do miracles to your health and well-being. It is time that we learn to do things in a more technologically enhanced way. We have ways for this that people can turn inward and know the highest pleasures of life. We must make our youth experience this. Unless you give them an alternative, they will go back to the bottle, they will go back to the pill. Right now, to be healthful, you need chemicals. To be peaceful, you need chemicals. To be joyful, you need chemicals. To experience anything within yourself, you need chemical help. So you must understand, when a generation uses chemicals like this, if ninety percent of the people start using pharmaceutical and other types of chemicals on a daily basis, the next generation that we produce will be in many ways less than who we are. This is a crime against humanity. All of us should wake up to this fact and do what is needed. Bhagwan, I cannot leave the habit of chain smoking. I have tried hard, but I have failed always. 
इज इट सिन टू स्मोक गुरुचरण डोंट मेक ए माउंटेन आउट ऑफ ए मोल हिल रिलीजियस पीपल आर वेरी स्किलफुल इन डूइंग दैट Now, what really you are doing when you are smoking? Just taking some smoke inside your lungs and taking it out. It is a kind of pranayam, <laughs> filthy, <laughs> dirty, but it's still a pranayam. You are doing yoga. in a stupid way <laughs> it is not sin it may be foolish but it is not a sin certainly there is only one sin and that is unawareness and only one virtue and that is awareness do what server you are doing but remain a witness to it and immediately the quality of your doing is transformed i will not tell you not to smoke that you have tried you must have been told by many so called saints not to smoke because if you smoke you will fall into hell god is not so stupid as your saints are just throwing somebody into hell because he was smoking cigarettes will be absolutely unnecessary is smoking is unhealthy unhygienic but not a sin it becomes a sin only if you are doing it unconsciously but it is not a smoking that makes it a sin but unconsciousness you say i cannot leave the habit of chain smoking i am less interested in your chain smoking i am more interested in your habit any habit that becomes a force dominating force over you is a sin one should live more in freedom one should be able to do things not according to habits but according to the situations a life is continuously changing it is a flux and habits are stagnant the more you are surrounded by habits the more you are close to life you are not open you don't have windows you don't have any communication with life you go on repeating your habits so remember i am against all kinds of habits good or bad is not the point there is no good habit as such there is no bad habit as such habits are all bad because habit means something unconscious that has become a dominating factor in your life that has become decisive you are no more 
the deciding factors. The response is not coming out of awareness, but out of a pattern, a structure that you have learned in the past. Guru Charan is smoking or no smoking, that is not important. Maybe if you continue to smoke, you will die a little earlier. So what? The world is so overpopulated. <laughs> you will do some good by dying a little earlier. Maybe you will have tuberculosis. So what? <laughs> if you really want something to do about your life, Dropping smoking is not going to help because I know people who drop smoking, then they start chewing gum. The same old stupidity. Or if they are Indians, they start chewing pan. It is the same. You will do something or other. Your unconsciousness will demand some activity, some occupation. It is an occupation and it is only a symptom. It is not really the problem. It is not the root of the problem. Have you not observed? Whenever you feel emotionally disturbed, you immediately start smoking. It gives you a kind of relief. You become occupied. Your mind is distracted from the emotional problem. Whenever people feel tense, they start smoking. The problem is tension. The problem is emotional disturbance. The problem is somewhere else. Is smoking is just an occupation. So you become engaged in taking they smoke in and out and you forget for the time being because mind cannot think of two things together. Remember it. One of the fundamentals of mind is it can think only of one thing at one time. It is one dimensional. So if you are smoking and thinking of smoking, then from all other anxieties, you are distracted. That's the whole secret of the so-called spiritual mantras. It is nothing but distraction, like smoking. You repeat, Om, 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 or Ram, 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 or Allah, Allah, Allah. That is just giving mind an occupation. And all these people who teach mantras say repeat as quickly as possible. So between two repetitions, there is not even a small gap. Let them overlap. So Ram, Ram, Ram. Don't give a gap between two Ramas. Otherwise some thought may enter. Repeat like crazy. Yes, it will give you a certain relief, the same relief that comes by smoking. Because your mind will be distracted from the anxieties and the world. You will forget about the world. You have created a trick. All mantras are tricks but they are spiritual. Chain smoking is also a mantra. It is worldly mantra. Non-religious you can call it. Secular. The real problem is the habit. You say, I have tried hard to drop it. You have not tried to be conscious of it, 
without trying to be conscious, you have tried to drop it. It is not possible. It will come back. Because your mind is the same, its needs are the same, its problems are the same, its anxieties, tensions is the same, its anguish is the same. And when those anxieties will arise, what you will do? Immediately, mechanically, you will start searching for the cigarettes. You may have decided again and again, and again and again you have failed. Not because a smoking is such a great phenomenon that you cannot get out of it, but because you are trying from the wrong end. Rather becoming aware of the whole situation, why you smoke in the first place, rather becoming aware of the process of his smoking, you are simply trying to drop it. It is like pruning the leaves of a tree without cutting the roots. And my whole concern here is to cut the roots, not to prune the tree. By pruning the leaves and the branches, the tree will become thicker. The foliage will become thicker. You will not destroy the tree. You will be helping in fact. If you really want to get out of it, you will have to look deeper. Not the symptom, but the roots. Where are the roots? You must be a deep anxiety ridden person. Otherwise, chain smoking is not possible. Chain smoking is a byproduct. You must be so concerned about thousand and one disturbances inside. You must be carrying a big load of worries on your heart, on your chest, that you don't know how to forget at least. You don't know how to drop them. Smoking at least helps you to forget about them. You say, I have tried hard. Be relaxed. Don't try hard. Because it is through relaxation you can become aware, not by trying hard. Be calm, quiet, silent. I will suggest smoke as much as you want to smoke. It is not a sin in the first place. I give you the guarantee. I will be responsible. I take the sin over myself. So if you meet God on the judgment day, you can just tell him that this fellow is responsible. Relax. And don't try to drop it with effort. No, that is not going to help. Zen believes in effortless understanding. So this is my suggestion. Smoke as much as you want to smoke. Just smoke meditatively. If Zen people can drink tea meditatively, why not you can smoke meditatively? In fact, the tea contains the same nicotine as the cigarettes contain. It is the same nicotine. There is not much difference. A smoke meditatively, very religiously. Make it a ceremony. Try it my way. Make a small corner in your house just for smoking. A small temple devoted to the god of smoking, <laughs> dedicated First bow down to your cigarette packet. (laughs) 
have a little chit chat talk to the cigarettes encore how you are and then very slowly take a cigarette out of it very slowly as slowly as you can because only if you take it very slowly you will be aware don't do it in a mechanical way as you always do then tape the cigarette on the package very slowly and as long as you want there is no hurry either then take the lighter go down to the lighter <laughs> these are our great gods deities light is god so why not the lighter <laughs> then start is smoking very slowly just like vipassana don't do it like pranayam quick and fast and deep very slowly buddha says breathe naturally so you smoke naturally very slow no hurry if it is a sin you are in a hurry if it is a sin you want to finish it as soon as possible if it is a sin you don't want to look at it you go on reading the newspaper and you go on smoking who wants to look at a sin but it is not a sin so watch it every act of yours and divide your acts into small fragments so you can move very slowly and you will be surprised by watching your smoking is slowly slowly is smoking will become less and less and one day suddenly it is gone and you have not made any effort to drop it it has dropped on its own accord because by becoming aware of a dead pattern routine a mechanical habit you have created you have released a new energy of consciousness in you only that energy can help you nothing else will ever help and not only about smoking guru charan about everything else in life don't try too hard to change yourself that leaves scars i emphasize not smoking is not virtue smoking is not sin awareness is virtue unawareness is sin and then the same law is applicable to your whole life 